Last time we got defeated by the Eye of Cthulhu, but in turn we defeated the King Slime. Today's goal is to get revenge on the Eye of Cthulhu. But before challenging the Eye of Cthulhu again, I decided to get my hands on the Storm Spear. It's a weapon that does a bit less damage than the Flaming Mace, but it shoots a projectile that does 1.5 times the base damage. So I went to the desert biome again and searched and searched. I went through a lot of the underground desert, but the sandstone chest where you can find the spear were nowhere to be found. When I was going through the underground desert, the Eye of Cthulhu wanted a rematch. I wasn't feeling like fighting it at the time, so when I teleported home, I went straight for the underground to despawn it. I spent like 30 minutes looking for the storm spear, but I couldn't find it. At home I realized I could combine some more accessories to free up more slots. I crafted the lightning boots and went straight to the underground desert. I really wanted to get the storm spear and finally some sandstone chests showed up. Sadly, they didn't contain the thing I was looking for. The first chest had a snake charmer's flute, the second chest had a magic conch, third chest had a snake charmer's flute as well, and the last chest I found had one more magic conch. A traveling merchant has arrived. I used this opportunity to sort my inventory and check out his wares. Once again he didn't have much useful stuff, so I went back to exploring the underground desert. After several minutes of searching I gave up. The storm spear is nowhere to be found, so I'll probably use the flaming mace to kill the Eye of Cthulhu. I made a quick stop at the angler's house and did the daily quest for him. All of my NPC houses are full, so I decided to make a small town in the oasis. I didn't really choose the best time, because there was a sandstorm happening, and the angry tumbleweeds are pretty annoying. Once again the houses are just wooden boxes, but I'm not really sure if I'll make them a bit prettier in the future. Maybe, but probably not. I did another quest for the angler the next day and also made another small town in the underground to get the pylons for easy travel. Another blood moon has risen, but you already know how it's gonna go. I just used the flaming maze when the enemies were in the pits. It was really easy to kill them this way. Slime is falling from the sky. That can only mean one thing. The King Slime wants a rematch and I'll gladly give it to him. I finished building the boss arena. It's just a long platform with some campfires. I didn't even make hard lanterns because I don't have that many hard crystals and I don't think I'll need it for King Slime. After killing the required amount of slimes, the king slime spawned. As I thought, king slime with a proper arena was a real pushover. And the royal gel I got from king slime the last time was pretty helpful as well. I didn't have to dodge the slimes coming from the slime rain. I figured I'll need a lot of money for reforges in the future, so I decided to build an AFK farm. This farm will also be helpful in the future for getting the biome keys. These keys have extremely low drop rate and they can drop from any enemy in a biome. Using a few simple tricks you can change the biome of the AFK farm on demand. So it's not a big deal that I'm building it in Cave's biome. 
It took a pretty long time, but with the help of dynamites, I quickly excavated the needed area. It has to be at least 99 blocks high and 168 blocks wide, as you can see on this diagram. After clearing out the few loose blocks that were left after the dynamite, I started building the pyramid shaped structure in the middle of the AFK farm. Place the lava for killing the mobs. You need to place it in the pyramid and on the bottom of the farm as well. Now all that's left to do is to build a room below the pyramid for AFK. It might seem like a waste of time to excavate such a large area but it will definitely pay off in the future. Now that the farm is complete, I did some more underground exploring. I got pretty lucky and found another mushroom biome with a few chests. I also got one gravitation potion. So I'm finally able to check out the floating islands. A star fury would be really nice to have. I also wouldn't mind a lucky horseshoe. I must have gotten super lucky, because out of three floating islands, every single one had something useful. The first one had a red balloon, the second one had star fury, and the last one had a lucky horseshoe. I couldn't hope for a better outcome than this. After this flying adventure I got back home and combined some more accessories. You feel an evil presence watching you. The Eye of Cthulhu wants a rematch and this time I'm ready. I took a few potions from my potion chest and went to the arena. The Eye of Cthulhu has awoken. Last time we just barely didn't beat it, but I won't let the Eye of Cthulhu make fun of me. This time I'm getting my revenge. The Star Fury's range is amazing. I can be pretty far and still damage it. I go back and forth in the arena and shortly after the second phase starts, the funniest thing happens. When I was close to my home, the Eye of Cthulhu got hit by a falling star. I couldn't believe my eyes. Not only it got hit by a falling star, but it actually got hit twice for like 2000 damage. This was really crazy. The last 300 health was pretty easy. So yeah. The second boss of the melee playthrough has been slain. I fulfilled my revenge. Thanks for watching.